fruit, like mm-hmm. type of fruit. Yeah, like um, I'm, I don't want to say a fruit right now. I don't want to. It's like off camera. Um, you want to change the category because like, I don't know a lot of fruits. Okay, sounds good. Cool. I'm so leaving that clip in just to make it funnier. <laughs> but like, off camera, sh- nobody heard. Let's just change the topic. <laughs> You're uh, like- How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is Preston Sibley with Mainly Niagara, and this is episode number five of the series. Today, I'm going to be interviewing Simon from Improv Niagara. I'm going to throw up a clip of who Simon is, and we're going to jump right into this video. Make sure you guys smash subscribe button, drop a like on this video, and comment down below what you guys want to see next. Make sure to follow me on all my social medias on the screen right now. Be sure to drop a follow on those. Much appreciated. All right, guys, enjoy the video. Peace. Hello, I am Simon Kalaikai. I was born and raised in the Philippines. Um, I have spent almost half of my life here in Canada. I've, I moved to the region February 2019. Um, my parents live in Chippewa, so I followed them to the region. Uh, I studied and worked in hospitality. I live and work in Niagara-on-the-Lake. I got introduced to improv through a, a, a workshop that a Guelph theater, where I learned improv for the first time, um, ran through the University of Guelph's College of Business and Economics uh, for I think, better communication and better presentation skills. Um, in the region, I volunteer for uh, Tomorrow's Voices, which is a kid, uh, not-for-profit kids' choir. Um, we meet every week on Zoom. Before the pandemic, we, meet, we met every week in, uh, at Mate Cafe in downtown St. Catharines. Um, in my spare time, I uh, climb, I rock climb, I practice yoga, and I hike. Welcome back, everyone. We're here with Simon from Improv Niagara. Thank you for coming on the show today. How are you, Simon? Doing well. It's family day. Um, I'm not with my family, but I'm going to go skating later. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Um, what do you do for a living? Um, I am. I work in hospitality, but I also do a lot of. Um, no, I also do improv with Improv Niagara, um, and Improv Niagara is a local improv troupe in the Niagara region, of course. Um, and we, I perform with them, but I also run the, the kids' workshops that we have on Tuesdays. Okay, I've definitely heard of you guys. Uh, for people who haven't, what do you guys do? Or uh, programs that you guys offer or anything like that? Um, we, even during the, co- during the pandemic, actually, especially before the pandemic, we have monthly shows in downtown St. Catharines. Um, that's our flagship show that... Our artistic director, Judge uh, sorry, Judge Bree Watson, Bree Watson, um, made, and there's like eight performers there, and it's like it's essentially like a Friday night show. Um, we also have uh, Bree actually also just started the classes wing of the classes arm of Improv Niagara. Uh, right now, she is running two classes, um, and this is like. I think the second, no, the third term, fourth term now. Um, She started running classes. Her first class in Improv Niagara was uh, last year, like literally was almost a year ago. Sorry, literally a year ago. Um, So yeah, performing and classes and workshops. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes. So what do you guys like do or do you guys do games? What do you guys teach the kids? Um, Anything like that? Um, Sweet, specifically for the workshop for the kids. It's really just an hour of, um, like you said, playing games. So I have a list of games that um, kind of have a, a certain goal uh, for the for the hour. So um, I actually kind of wanted to, I, I made a one-on-one workshop for us, Preston. Okay. Uh, if that's, if we can do that for like 10 minutes sure, or yeah. something. Great. Um, so yeah, uh, I bring in games with a specific goal. Like for me right now, I'll tell you my goal for this one-on-one, one-on-one workshop. Um, my goal is to introduce three tools of improv, so tools of improv, okay. um, and then combine all those three tools that I'll introduce to you, combine all of them into one performance game. Okay. So we're going to do a little bit more. Of a sounds, scene. sounds fun. <laughs> um, and yes, uh, I'll introduce those three tools of improv, the skills that we, you gain mm-hmm. through practicing improv, through classes, um, through performing even, um, and through everything else. Um I'll introduce those three tools through games. Um, okay. Yes. Um, 
is it just kids that you guys work with? Or I think I was reading that you guys do stuff with parents too. Yeah. Um, we actually just started the kids workshop uh, a month ago. Um, the classes that are running um, now are for adults. Um, okay. Not specifically parents, but like we do have parents of uh, young kids in the, yeah, in the that's class. Right, just adults in general um, instead of like just kids or... Yeah. yeah, we're kind of mixing it up right now with the kids, but um, I like adults come to classes like sure for the skills, but really it's like two hours of like two hours they're carving out for themselves to like just have fun and enjoy life, you know, and just be silly and have fun and play games. So yes, do we need any skill level or any specific skills to join or to participate in improv? Um, not at all. Um, not in the workshops for kids and specifically not for the workshop for the kids um as a side note for the adults oh there you go that's my thumb <laughs> video um and as a side note for the adults there are uh, there's an intro class um that they can go to you know if they're with, without any skills but um can specifically talk with the kids um definitely not like they come as they are um the past month we've been um It's a slow, it's been a slow start, um, but it's been fun because like we've gotten kids um, from around the world, not specifically Niagara. We like the first week we had two Niagara kids. Um, second week we had one from state, the States and one from the UK um, and et cetera, et cetera. None of them had improv experience. None of them had like formal improv experience. And some of them had like, if, if they were in high school here in Canada, like the two Niagara kids, mm -hmm. um, they would have had taken they would have had some improv classes in their drama classes but not like specifically improv for eight weeks or seven weeks at two hours okay. week, you know um, hmm. and that's what i wanted to ask you too like do you um do you have any um, because we're doing that one on one, one workshop like we're gonna um we're gonna really exemplify here that you don't need any skill levels or hmm. whatever skill levels you come with that's what you go with and like go to the workshop with um, do you have any improv experience for yourself? Um, nothing professional. I haven't really done an improv, not too much. I've done plays for my school, uh, behind stage, on stage. Um, I was in the Willy Wonka play uh, for my school. Back. Poster there, like yeah, on the your... posters over here um, towards the wall right there. Uh, that was back in 2019. Um, it was a performance we did uh rehearsing for about two months and then it happened to be on my birthday uh, we did the we did the performance so it was kind of like i'm like i heard that it was going to be in june i'm like watch it's going to be on my birthday and then i'm <laughs> upset because like there goes my night and it happened to be on my birthday and i'm like okay well now i'm hanging out with all my friends on my birthday so yeah but two months into rehearsing um i was actually doing all the backstage and then they're like, we still need one more person. And I'm like, nope, not me. Nope, I'm not doing this. I'm not going on stage. Preston. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, come on, you got to do it. Like, you're good. Like, we've, you've been, pro you've been uh, rehearsing all the other students to do it. Smart. And so I did it, and I played um, one of the lead characters in the play. Um, and that was kind of the only uh, thing I've done on stage. And then I've done drama class throughout grade nine um, for school. And now I'm doing it in grade 10 again this year. And I'll probably do it again in like grade 11 or 12 and just continue. And like I've done with YouTube, I'm trying to continue being on camera. And I feel like doing drama back in high school or in high school, um, it's giving me the more experience that I need and to know how to be on camera when coming to either do an interview like this or to be on camera for one of my own videos. But improv, not too much. I mean, unless you consider YouTube videos improv. Um, not all of them, but some of them, because like I kind of just, everything just comes out of my mouth and I just say what I want. Um, I don't really play in scripts that often. So unless you consider that a bit of improv, then nothing improv related. Absolutely, I would consider that improv. Like the... Um... Ooh, sorry. You had so so many juicy like points there that I want to like go through it. Mm -hmm. uh, first off, you said professional like, professional improv training. Like that makes it sound like that. I don't want 
the the workshop, the kids' workshop, to sound like, oh my gosh, I'm like, you gotta be bring your A game. Like, mm-hmm. um, the workshops are really just like just a place for the kids to play online. Um, sure, it's it's still on in a video format, which is you know, still challenging. Like they've been on in front of the screens the whole day and for school and now they're just after school and then they go to do what they want in yeah. improv and they're back on their screens and yeah and it's it's so hard like i can't i'm not a parent myself um mm. but i can kind of imagine what parents think and like what, what even what the kids think like um but the way i frame it like, sorry like i can imagine what they think like you know like maybe let's just not like you know like let's wait for in-person workshops and stuff like mm-hmm. that or like um uh I feel like there's lots of opportunity because it's the video, a video format, but like if you forge ahead, you trudge through it, it's kind of, it's great because what I really love about improv is it's mental practice. It's mental exercise. Um, and with the pandemic going on right now, like I feel like um, having a different activity using the camera, using the laptop is going to, um, is going to enable their children to not resent the format so much. Okay. You know what I mean? Because like if you're yeah. you're only doing classes, if you're only doing like the all work and no play with this laptop, I am going to hate this laptop. Yeah, and it's also hard to interact with kids and even adults because not having the face-to-face uh, interaction and being able to show them if you're demonstrating or because they just looking through a screen but um either you can position if you're like teaching them something you can uh position them in a way how to like stand or move their hands or something like that not being in a room with each other and interacting one-on-one or even with a group um can be difficult through a screen yeah and like i remember the beginning of the pandemic and when improv was still like the improv community was still like um, kind of digesting everything like okay like everything needs to everything is shut down I, I guess we have to go online and like the community was like it wasn't split but there were a lot of opinions like it's not gonna work like the human aspect that we're missing the one-on-one like personal like in the same room the human mm-hmm. aspect is not there anymore like and you know other opinions and um, so there was a mixed bag of opinions with, um, with online with the online format but I think like because throughout the year it's evolved so much and like they're there's so many classes now online. Like um, we just had a workshop. Like Bree Watson, the, uh, the co-founder of Improv Niagara, she had some contacts with teachers in Chicago and in New York. So we were able to like have a workshop um, for um, for Niagara improvisers and Niagara residents, um, uh, taught by someone like the head of Advanced Improv from the Second City of Chicago. Or, um, you know, it's like opportunities like that are like, Mm -hmm. cool. I kind of felt when like school went online because like they closed school right away and then they're like, no. And then they like, oh, we can just go on. We can transfer everyone online. And they were starting to figure that. And that's where I feel like most kids uh, had the difficulty in transferring because they didn't have that one-on-one interaction or conversations with their teacher um the teacher either specifically showing them on the board or something like that writing it out for them because now they just post the work and they kind of just sit back and wait for emails to come in if kids have any questions um so they're not really doing as much um and i think it's such a sad reality that we're like living through this pandemic but i guess like one of the things that like um that that brilliant teacher uh, from um from New York uh, that we had that like a workshop with that mm. um, she was saying that um, the improvisers who are like embracing the online format mm. and I think we, sh- we can extrapolate from that and we can see like the students who are embracing the on- online format but like specifically the imp- she said the improvisers that are embracing the online format are going to be ahead of the game once we go back to in-person performances, once we go back to in-person classes, because this format that we're on right now, and I I firmly believe believe this too, like this requires a lot more listening, a lot more um, Mm -hmm. focus sharing, which is the giving and taking the focus. Um, 
mainly those two that I found over the years, like, oh, sorry, over the pandemic, the way that I'm doing improv, like those two um, are being sharpened right now by the students who are doing the online stuff, mm-hmm. and even the improvisers who are doing, who have embraced the online format. Um, and those two, by the way, like listening and um, focus sharing, like giving and taking focus, those are examples of the tools of improv that like kids um, get can and adults kids and adults can get out of improv classes it's not it's not just um it's not just like performing it's 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 so much more than that it's it's not improv isn't only for actors and uh, for artists it's it should be for everyone because like the skills that we're the human skills of like listening and like giving taking focus like those tools of improv those human skills we all need to practice them when you know we leave the online format yeah. um so that's this kind of stuff that um uh, the theory of improv through games mm-hmm. uh, that's the kind of stuff that the kids um can do in these workshops and not just in, but yes yeah that's the kind of stuff that um that they get out get out of the uh, the classes in the workshop mm-hmm. Uh, before we move on to the workshop that you had planned for us, was there any other questions you had for me or anything else you wanted to say? Um, I think, I think you answered all my questions. Um, ooh, uh, experience stage time. Oh yes. Uh, I kind of covered that. I had two other points. I put stage time in quotation marks. Um, when you said that, cause like when I asked about your like improv experience and you mentioned the like, stage time, um, uh, kids and adults don't need any experience on stage, on stage, like even, okay. even the experience of um, being backstage, mm-hmm. just, just being a human experience is rich because like now you can, in an improv scene, you can pull from that. You can make a scene in the backstage, you know what I mean? Like, um, or like even something as mundane as going to a grocery store, um, that could, that's the type of experience you'd like to bring into an improv scene because you can make a scene between two people maybe fighting in aisle six of the grocery store. Um, so uh, you don't need stage time experience. You don't need professional experience. You just mm-hmm. come as you are. Walk on stage and it's like pressing go or pressing start. Like just whatever comes into your mind, you say kind of. It's like walking on stage and then having a tool belt. Like this is the stage that we have and I have a tool yeah. belt. I'd like walk on stage and then pick a tool, an improv tool, yeah. to practice in classes, and then use that, and then use another tool to make it. And then like, yeah, so that's that's the way I kind of look at it. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. When we return, uh, Simon's going to show me this workshop that he has planned for us. Great. Let's get into it. Um, I'm going to teach you, Preston, the first ever game that I learned in improv. Okay. Um, And I learned this through the wonderful founders of a theater in Guelph. Um, I was studying in the university at the University of Guelph at that time, Um, and they, the founders of the Making Box Theater in Guelph, the Making Box Theater. Yeah. Julie Reed and Haley Kellett. Uh, Ooh, big. Big idols in my, uh, big influences in my head. Um, they were running uh, an improv for better communication, something like that, better communication uh, with the College of Business and Economics, which where I, where I, where I was. Um, anyways, all that to say, I'm going to teach you that first ever game that I that made me fall in love in improv. And it's very okay. simple. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's counting to three, and really. Um, <laughs> Oh, I can make it tougher, Preston. All right, let's do this. Um, let's start easy, though. Um, we'll alternate numbers. Um, so if I say, if I start the game and I'll say one, you'll then say two. And then I'll say three, and then you restart the count to one. Yes, and then I'll say two, and then you. Three. And then I'll go restart it one. Two. Three. One. Two. Three. One. Two. A little quicker now, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Great job. Let's pause there. Uh, I was uh, I was going to mess up counting the three. (laughs) Ooh, if you mess up, you know what'll happen? (laughs) We'll both laugh. 
like we'll laugh at how funny how, I'm, I'm just trying to keep up with you like you sped that up on me i'm like counting to three is hard in this situation <laughs> Well, I'll make it harder right now. I'll make it harder by replacing the number two with a snap. Or do you snap or clap? Do you, I can do snap. You a snap or a clap? You can snap? Oh, great. Awesome. Snap. Snap. Might be better on, it might be better through the microphone if I snap and send a clap. Yeah. Okay. Great. I'm going to, I don't, I don't know how great my audio, my microphone. The audio is fine. And you clapping like right in front of your uh, camera was fine. Sweet. Okay. Great. So well, let's I can pick it up. Great. So I'm going to snap back here just because. It's. It's a better camera. I mean, better microphone. <laughs> um, great. So yeah, let's let's replace the number two with snaps. Um, do you mind starting this time? One. Two. Oh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. I see what you mean. <laughs> right. Oh, and then um, if um, if whoever uh, whoever of us like um, messes up messes up, um, and after we laugh, whoever messes up starts the recount again. Okay. Uh, one, three, one, three, uh, one, uh, oh, great. I snapped again. <laughs> Just gotta think of what number comes after a snap, like, cause it's either three or one. It's, it's always going to be a three. Oh, you're right. Oh. <laughs> It's like a dancer. It's like the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> you want to restart again? One. No, two does not come after one. Or two, it does come after one. It doesn't come before one. Yeah, That's like, what I meant to say. I love, I, I love, like, I'm going to make it harder for us later, but I love this That's first amazing. iteration. What, what level of difficulty was this? <laughs> oh, this was, this was intermediate. This is moderate. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Um, but I love the moderate sound because it's like a dance. It's like it's like a waltz. It's like one, one, three, 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 one, one. Um, and I and I'm gonna talk about uh, talk about a a tip to become faster at this game or to play faster. Um, and I think and I know you already did it. Um, I think even through the camera, we maintained eye contact. Especially when I turned up the, uh, when I increased the speed there, we just like, we were like a yeah, lot. I've had a lot of people ask like, why, like on, when you're watching my video, a lot of my eyes are looking this way, but they're like, but my camera's straight ahead. And they're like, why do you do that? Cause I'm looking at the person I'm talking to. I'm not looking directly into my camera Yeah. where my eyes are focused in the middle of the screen. They're focused on you. Cause then when I'm thinking, I'm like, if I'm looking straight, you can probably tell I'm not looking at you right now. And you know, I just, I, I like when I'm concentrating and talking to someone, I'm always giving them eye contact and. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, another tool of improv, I'm sorry, I'm nerding out here, but like when you said, like when you're concentrating on someone, when you're talking to, like you're giving the focus to them and you're act, you're sharply listening. Mm -hmm. And um, that as, as uh, Bree would say, like that is really like the root of improv, like I mean, just some listening. Of my, to some of my previous uh, interviews I've done, um, I've had, there's been points where they say something and I'm like, wait, what? Because I'm supposed to make a response after that, but I'm like, I was in listening to you and I'm actually learning something. I'm not just like filming and asking you questions. I'm actually learning about it too. So then I'm like, oh wait. And then off camera, I'm like, wait, what did you, you just give me a quick, quick recap and what can I say next? And yeah. uh, I was actually listening and stuff. Like um, that. Preston, because of that, I'm going to pause our counting to three. We'll get back to that later. But I want to play now a different game. Um, and it's called, it's simply called Yes And. So it's Yes, comma, A and D, and. So anything um, like counting to one to three, then uh, let's uh, try. Oh, come on. Trust yourself here. Um, and I'm bringing it up because, like, um, uh, this, this game was inspired now by you saying, um, you know, sometimes you're like listening and like you're just really taking everything in, all the information that you're getting, and then and now then you have to make a response. But you're like, oh look, well, I was just like, I just wanted to listen to you. Um, let's practice that and let's like sharpen that end tool. So and I know you do this so much already, and you're you're great at it because again, like you do these YouTube YouTube videos. But for the sake of the workshop, let's just let's just all right, <laughs> let's uh, try um, and. Yes, and is a two-parter, so it's really like you agree. 
I don't know if this is the left or right, but like the yes is mm -hmm. you you listen you listen to the you really listen to what your partner your scene partner you and I are scene partners right yeah. now. The yes part of yes and is you listening and taking all the information in that your scene partner is giving you, and the end is making whatever they said um, making it more important or adding to it. Um, and really that's the root of improv, yes and. Um, you you agree, you listen, you take everything in, you listen to it, and then you add your little bit of, um, yeah. little bit of um, addition to it, like a little bit of more importance, give it more stakes or what have you. There's a lot of things going on. So there. what I'm hearing is a conversation. <laughs> Let's have one. Um, and this game, <laughs> yes, and this conversation is going to be, um, we all, you and I are going to have a conversation, um, but we have to start our sentences with the words, yes, and, and then we continue. Yeah. Um, I should be used to this. I did this quite a bit when I was a kid. <laughs> just in a no, it was just like, yep, okay. <laughs> yes, yeah. and I hear you get a lot more, like, I know you should, you, you, like you said, um, you should be good at this because like sure you, you did that as a kid too but like you still are practicing now <laughs> yeah um well, have we started yet yeah go yes and oh, yes oh. yeah go on yes and um <laughs> let me try that again yes and um i feel like that's how kids talk when they're younger because we either don't know a lot of words, we don't know a lot of like mature words, if I'm putting that in the right context. Um, either longer words or it's like looking up what's a different word for uh, because or something like that, just as an example. Um, instead of saying like because this, because that, uh, what's a different like uh, synonym for one specific word? So I feel like that's why I was like, I've, I say yes and as a kid a lot because I didn't know a lot of words that I know now or how to pronounce them. But yeah. Yes. And I don't think you should discredit yourself um, and or even kids. Like, um, even if you don't have, like you said, those longer words or like, um, you know, other stuff that adults have, um, you're still a human being as an as a kid and like you have you know you have feelings and you have reactions to things so even that like you bring into a scene and like mm -hmm. the scene is just, just a rich scene like the uh, the audience can see like the human experience and that's really satisfying mm -hmm. yes and was there anything else that you wanted to uh, talk about or another game that you wanted to play or Ooh, great great yes ending that, that was that was hard because i was gonna i was gonna say definitely like that's something and i'm like no i have to say yes and, and it forces you it forces you it's oh. hard to work because i'm thinking of what i'm gonna say next and i'm like how can i fit yes and i can't just be like yes and all right we're gonna like we're gonna play another game now. like okay all right yes and was there anything else you wanted to play so <laughs> oh yes great um um ooh, i think we can wrap up by finishing count to three and making it no harder. no no yes <laughs> well, yes, <Man. laughs> um uh, let's do a quick recap um two is now a snack we're, so we're still doing that oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, like okay. One, two oh, sorry one three one three. i'm gonna call it now i'm gonna mess up on the first time and then we're gonna laugh and then we're going to laugh, really. Yeah. And so is the whole audience that is watching this video. So if you guys are enjoying this, make sure you guys smash the subscribe button, drop a like on this video, and comment down below what you want to see next when I get back into making my own videos. All right. Let's, uh, um, Preston, you, want to, you mind starting? If it's saying a number, then sure. One. Three. One. Oh. Three. <laughs> One. Three. One. Three. One. Three. Let's make it a little quicker. One. <laughs> Three. One. Three. One. Three. One. Three. Pause. We're too good at that. Let's make it harder. My um, uh, 
the the camera froze for a second so you were in the middle laughing and then oh is that it just jumped to you saying three i'm like i think i missed you or missed the skip or something like that because i snapped but then the then the camera froze so oh oh preston mm. you should take some classes with us but well, anyways thinking of, i'm thinking about it you i'm going one time near and i don't think i can leave now so <laughs> we'll give you a taster <laughs> um we're gonna we're gonna keep snapping for two okay. but instead of saying the number one we're gonna say our scene partner's name so if i'm starting oh, no, instead of me saying one simon i will snap. say preston simon snap three yes would it, and then it would eventually re- replace three with something or oh oh your instincts are sharp my friend yes okay <laughs> okay <laughs> um um, I feel like we're running out of time though, so let's let's just let's practice the the second iteration though. Um, saying our scene partner's name. So, okay. Do you mind starting? Sure, Simon. Three. Preston. Three. Simon. Three. Preston. Three. Oh, we're too good at that. We're too good at that. Now we're going to replace the number three with words from a category. So we're going to choose a category before we start. Um, I'm going to make it simple. Let's make, let's make the category types, I guess, sorry, uh, let's make the category fruit, like fruit? type of fruit. Yeah, like, um, I'm, I don't want to say a fruit right now. I don't want to. It's like off camera. Um, you want to change the category? Cause like, I don't know a lot of fruits. Okay. Sounds good. Cool. I'm so leaving that clip in just to make it funnier, <laughs> but like off camera, sh- nobody heard. Let's just change the topic. <laughs> You're uh, like- Fruit. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, let's say, all right, so what's the topic that you want to pick today? <laughs> That's good. Um, ooh, what would be a good topic? Um, let's just, let's do colors. Okay. Okay. I can do that. All right. Great. Okay. Great. <laughs> okay. So your name, Snap Color. Okay. I feel like it's gonna be, that's going to be also like, not hard, but it's going to be difficult too, because if you say a color that I'm thinking of, I'm going to have to, I'm going to, I'm about to say it. And then we're going to eventually run out of colors. And I'm like, did you ever <laughs> say that? Because I feel like, I feel like back to the fruit, like if you say like uh, apple or something, I'm not going to say apple, but like, did you say like multiple colors later? Did you say that color already or something like that? <laughs> so, all right, we can uh, try this. Am I started or did you want to or? Oh, you start. You start. Okay, Simon. Red. Oh, uh, Preston. Blue. Simon. Green. Preston. Yellow. Simon. Uh, purple. Oh, Preston. S- uh. <laughs> oh, <ooh>, white. <laughs> Simon. Uh, gold. Preston. Black. Uh, Simon. Uh, I already said red. And there's so many colors that I could say, but they're just not. I'm thinking of the common ones, right? And it, like, and think of like, and you know what I was gonna do next if, if we were gonna. We're like, gonna speed it up, and I'm like, oh great, <laughs> I'm running out of colors already. <laughs> Wait, I think we already said the whole rainbow, and there's only like. <laughs> What is it like six or six to twelve? And I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm running yeah. out of colors, and I could say I was gonna like beige was in my head. I'm like, but do I say that or? <laughs> like, that's still yes, you do. Yes, you do. It's Next time. color, but like, I'm thinking of common colors that I'm gonna say off the top of my head. So I was even thinking like I I had this thought in my head. I'm like, oh, white and black are hues, not color, like or whatever they are. Like, they're not colors. Like, yeah, is this like? But I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna say it. Boom. Yeah. Well. And so people who didn't know that or whatever, it's a color to them, but... Yeah, this is, this. yeah we don't need to get technical here. Yeah, uh, this is improv class. We make it up as we go. Preston, I think I have attained my goal of introducing three tools of improv uh, to you. I think you did. The workshop. Um, and it's listening, uh, focus sharing, and... Ooh, ooh. Ah, ooh. Agreement and yes-ending. Anyway, sorry. Uh, 
Yeah, I think you did a, I think you did a fantastic job of doing that. Confused me at some points, <laughs> messed me up at some points, but I think that's the purpose of improv is learning new skills and messing up is okay and um, having those mistakes. And it's not just like, I messed up and you're like, oh, you messed up. Like, that's stupid. Like, you're stupid or something like that. Like, you can't even say a color or something. Like, no, you, we laughed together and we kind of just like kept it going. And yeah. Said. Mm-hmm. Snaps, snaps all around. Thank you for indulging me. To, uh, yeah, I, me, like. I appreciate you coming on the show today. <laughs> um, one last thing. Was there anything else that you wanted to say to the viewers who are watching this? Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, if if you and your if you want to sign your kids up to these free workshops, um, it's running every Tuesday. Uh, the ones in February start at three p.m. every Tuesday. Um, March, we're still um, we're still kind of like waiting on um, mm-hmm. things to kind of settle down, but it's going to be every Tuesday afternoon, um, and it's free. Just we want more Niagara kids um, signing up because like that's really you know that's why we made a space. Um, and right now we. Only a third of the kids who have showed up are from Niagara. So hopefully, okay. you know, if you're Niagara parents, please sign your kids up. It will just be fun for them. One last question I wanted to ask you. When kids go home, um, how do, or when kids finish the workshop, uh, how do they feel? Like, are, they, are some kids, like, upset that they uh, did something that either they couldn't participate in because they couldn't say or they kept messing up or do the majority of the kids go home in like a happy and they had fun and uh good reviews and stuff like that um i'll sum it up by saying it's so ner- hearing the kids and doing these workshops for me personally um has been so nourishing because i would hear so much of the kids laugh like the laughter mm-hmm. that i would hear throughout you know like throughout them messing up and you know like the light bulb moment of like oh it's okay to mess up like just yeah. stuff things like that you know, that i see as uh, the moderator of these things the facilitator it's like it's so rewarding and i think um when the kids i'm sorry like i'm gonna finish this thought and i know yeah. you have something um when the kids come in like they don't really know what to expect and then they're like kind of like hesitant to like participate mm-hmm. like they don't really know what to do um compare that to when they leave and you know, have, they've had a, an hour of laughing here and there and like you know, participating in everything like that. Just when they leave, it's, they leave with a smile on their face. Oh, God, that sounds so cliche, but it's mm-hmm. the reality. Is. And you got to remember that messing up is okay because that's a part of life. And I, it all depends on who the person is because even some people will still feel, oh, we're all la-, like, they're all laughing because like to laugh and like, it's okay that you messed up. But someone could still take it personally and be like, oh, they're all laughing at me because I messed up. But knowing that, like, you laughing at me, like, today, and I'm like, because I was laughing back because it's funny that I messed up. I'm like, how did I mess up? And then, like, how I threw in that clip of off camera, I didn't know fruits or something like that because I knew I was going to continue messing up on that. Um, so you laughing at me, I'm like, okay, like, I'm, I'm going to join you because like, it was still funny, but some kids, especially depending on the age of them, they can still take it personally and can still make them upset, like, oh, like, uh, so-and-so is laughing at me, and so is the rest of the class. I mean, it was funny that I messed up, but it still hurt my feelings or something like that, but messing up's a part of life, and you make it into a joke after, and you fix it the next uh, time, or whatever. But yeah. <laughs> that again. Oh gosh! All right. Um, once again, guys, this cla- or this workshop is 100% free. So if you guys want to check it out, all the links are in the description. Um, Simon, I thanks once again for you coming on the show. It's a pleasure to have you. All right, guys. Once again, uh, this workshop's free. Like I just said, um, if you guys want to go check it out, all the links are in the description. Sign your kid up, or even if you're an adult and you want to join, all the links are in the description for that. If you guys enjoy this interview and want to see more like this, the rest of my interviews are up in the right top corner. You guys can just click on that. There's a playlist called Interviews and Events. You guys can go check that out. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to smash subscribe button, drop a like on this video, and comment down below. Uh, Simon, I will stay in touch with you, and I hope to chat with you soon. Preston, it's been a genuine pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, stay safe. Have fun. Bye.
Last thing I want to mention, guys, before we end this video, sorry, but I did have the chance to join one of their actual workshops, and man, was it amazing. Uh, interacting with younger kids from around the world was so cool, guys. I'm not going to go into full detail right now, but if you guys want to go check out my review, it will be on Improv Niagara's uh, website soon, so I'll give you guys the link on my Instagram story, and when it's done, I'll post it in the description of this video. All right, everybody, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. My name is Preston Simply with Mainly Niagara, and this was episode number five of this series. If you guys enjoyed the video, please smash the subscribe button, drop a like on this video, and comment down below what you guys thought. New merch is coming soon, along with new videos always, every single week, guys. So stay tuned for that. Check us out. All the links are in the description. Shout out to Mainly Niagara and Improv Niagara for this interview. Guys, stay safe out there. Peace.